Hello, my name is Sarah Williams and I am a clinical trainer working for Medi UK. I am here today, been very kindly invited by Legs Matter and accompanied by um, our panellist, Tracy Goodwin, who is a patient panellist for Legs Matter and also a vascular nurse consultant, Leanne Atkin, who is passionate about ensuring that we standardise our lower limb treatment care. I have provided a um, ready-made presentation on stockings are not just for Christmas, and it tries to cover some of the aspects about how we can help you to try to find the right garment to help improve your circulation and to make every day wearing compression comfortable. So what we're going to do is play the short presentation now, and then afterwards we'll have an opportunity to run through some questions that you might want to pose either to myself, Leanne or Tracy. So over to the video. Hello and welcome to this educational session on stockings are not just for Christmas. In today's climate, we are all thinking about how we can keep ourselves well and healthy. And I'm going to let you know that wearing compression hosiery every day is a really easy addition to your day to day lifestyle to help prevent problems from happening in the future to keep yourselves well. So why do we need stockings? Stockings are a popular choice at Christmas, that much is true, but I want you to learn that compression hosiery is beneficial all year round. With the sudden drop in temperature, I have started wearing my compression tights to keep me warm. However, the main aim of compression stockings, as well as making you look and feel good, is to support your circulatory system to make it work more effectively, preventing things from deteriorating in the future. I have listed some reasons here where compression stockings would benefit you in your day-to-day -day life and activities, aiming to keep you as healthy as we can, looking forward to the future. We all know that sitting all day is bad for our health. And when we understand the human circulatory system and how we are intended to live and move, then you can imagine how staying sat in a chair can severely limit your mobility and posture as we age. Therefore, wearing compression socks has been shown to prevent or reduce swelling and venous blood pooling in the legs and feet. This will actually decrease the risk of blood clotting, which can lead to blockages that cause heart attacks. While it might be hard to imagine that footwear can be so important, the truth is that this simple small investment is a step each day in the right direction for better health and less hospital time as we age. However, standing for long periods of time isn't good for us either. Walking and movement encourages more blood flow by using the calf as a muscle pump for our veins. But standing in one position will greatly reduce the effectiveness of this system. This is why people who undertake occupations that mean they need to stand up for long periods of time should be investing in wearing compression socks. This will also mean that at the end of your day, your legs will feel less tired and have more energy. Holidays have been a sore point this year for some of us. However, risks of travelling are not just limited to long haul flights. Even long journeys taken in the car, train or plane, if they are over three hours, could increase your risk of poor circulation resulting in swollen feet and legs. This is because the blood can thicken and if a vein then becomes blocked, a clot may develop leading to a deep vein thrombosis. Using compression socks is a great tool to prevent this. As well, it will help to keep your legs feeling fresh when you finally arrive at your destination. Other traveller tips are, if possible, get up and walk about. Drink plenty of water or tea or similar drinks. If you can, remember, perform some foot exercises, such as flexing, extending and circling your ankles helps to activate the blood circulation. Just remember, not all travel socks are expected to adhere to strict regulations, unlike Medi. Duomed Soft is Medi's choice of a travel sock and it provides medical efficacy by meeting high quality standards as a medical device. The veins 
are the vessels in our circulation that carry deoxygenated blood away from our body tissues back towards the heart. The veins in our legs have an extremely hard job because they have to move blood from the furthest point of our body up against the force of gravity. Because they are working so hard, sometimes they become weak. And this diagram is comparing how healthy veins work effectively against unhealthy veins, where the volume of blood is pooling and causing the veins to expand. The venous valves are then no longer closing effectively. This is when you might see your feet and ankles start to swell. Other skin changes may be such as varicose veins, dry itchy skin, thread veins, areas of darkening skin colour in the lower limb, a general ache in your legs, and ultimately you might start to see some breaks in your skin which could lead to a wound or ulcer. Just remember, if you stop wearing the stockings, you will stop reaping the benefits as well. Remember you can wear your compression hosiery when you are exercising as well. Some athletes actually wear compression post a workout to improve their recovery time. Remember to check out the Legs Matter website. You can find a wealth of resources there that can reassure you that you are not struggling alone. Medi is one of the largest manufacturers of compression garments in the world. Its main focus has always remained on the clinical benefits to you as an individual, as well as providing a comfortable garment that is stylish, that many of your friends and family would never appreciate you are wearing as a medical device. Duomed Soft is a perfect place to get started with your compression wardrobe. Think of them as your starter kit. Duomed Soft is made of a sheer silky lightweight fabric which means that they are particularly easy to apply and remove. I will show you later some easy steps to take to ensure that we find the right fit for you. All of our garments are latex free and machine washable. Our products are available online at our Medi UK shop and this particular product is available via your local GP surgery. If you were thinking, what do I need to know now to go and order my first pair of Medi Cool Socks, I'm going to guide you through it step by step. Step one, find your style. Duomed Soft is available in both below knee and thigh length. The thigh length has a silicone top band. Measuring for Duomed Soft couldn't be easier. Grab a tape measure and take the circumference at the smallest part of the ankle and the widest part of the calf. You will also need to take a measurement at the top of the thigh for thigh length. There is no need to measure the length of the leg or the foot for this particular garment. Once you have your measurements, it's time to select your size. The huge benefit of Duomed Soft is that you base your size on the ankle circumference. And as you can see from the chart, the sizes come in small to extra, extra large. The chart demonstrates there's no overlap in the ankle sizes. This makes size selection really simple, but it also means you get a really good fitting stocking. As you look at the calf measurements, there is some overlap here. And if you border on two different sizes, then just consider how easy you're gonna find it to put the garment on and off, or if you need assistance, and then you can decide which size would be more appropriate. So I just wanted to explain some of the terminology used within compression socks. The amount of support the fabric provides is described in class levels and is measured in millimetres of mercury. The higher the number, the increased level of support and the firmness of fabric. However, the general rule is the more advanced the clinical signs and symptoms, the higher level of compression required. We therefore advocate that class one is fine for anybody to buy over the counter. However, if this doesn't manage your skin changes, then you should discuss other options with your healthcare practitioner. There are different pictures of venous disease on the Legs Matter website to um, enable you to understand this further. You need to decide what toe option you would like. Open toe may be useful in the summer if you want to wear flip-flops or sandals, or if you have issues with your toes and they feel more comfortable with more wriggle room. 
Closed toe is also popular, however, as the weather is cooling down. And the last step you need to think about is colour. There are only two options, and this can help some of those people that struggle with making decisions. So that is it. You have all the information you need for your starter kit. I think we've covered everything. Now all you need to do is to place your order and you can start enjoying wearing comfortable socks, knowing that you are being proactive and taking another positive step to keeping yourself healthy. So we have covered why we need to look after ourselves. We need to stay as fit as we possibly can to combat any future health issues. But by taking action today, you can prevent problems happening in the future and adding compression socks into your daily routine is a really positive step forward. Thank you so much for listening. If you need any further information, please contact the MediUK clinical team at inquiries.clinical at mediuk.co.uk. Thank you. So that's the presentation um, completed. And uh, I just want to reinforce that obviously with the current climate that there has been lots of changes in working um, within the NHS and um, outside. And it's just that we need to work together to try and support patients, maybe not to come in to um, see clinicians if they don't have to. And it's trying to improve education so that the more that we can provide knowledge to our patients, that they're aware of what to look for. Um, and then they know Know when they need to go and see their healthcare practitioner and this is really what legs matter is all about this week isn't it leanne is about making sure that we've given as much information as possible to give our patients the general public the opportunity to make an informed decision what they need to do next indeed yeah it's all about really uh, raising the awareness about what's normal and what's not normal um so um thank you for that excellent video you touched on the importance of um, the role that compression garments have when you are flying in terms of reducing that risk of blood clotting that everybody knows about. But I think the one thing that a lot of ladies, uh, more than men, tend to struggle with when they go abroad or in humid conditions is that often you can get the mildest of swelling on your feet especially on a night time so therefore you know when you're taking your nice pretty sandals away with you you actually find them a little bit tight to put your shoes in and it's interesting that as I'm getting older um, um, that I'm actually um, suffering from this when I go away or even in the UK and uh, when we have got some warmer weather can compression hosiery help with any of that? Yes, absolutely. As you say, just some mild swelling is when it would be really beneficial and um, lightweight fabric such as the one that we were um, discussing in that presentation is absolutely perfect just for that real light support. It doesn't have to be um, a firm fabric to be able to manage those conditions. Um, and as you say, for ladies, unfortunately, we may um, be more susceptible to do that due to the fact that um, we have you know, hormones that maybe cause that as well as maybe travel. And sometimes even um, when we're going through pregnancy, that kind of sort of little bit of um, lower limb swelling um, is a factor that we might want to manage by wearing something a little bit supportive. Yeah, and, and I can see a question that's come in um, from um, Joe, who's listening, asking if we can wear, uh, what's the advice of wearing them on a night time? Um, and I'm sure that you'll be able to answer that. But just from my point of view, the way that I manage my swelling when I go abroad is I don't want to wear my compression hosiery through the day because I, I do want to get my le legs slightly tanned. Um, but what I do do is if I've got some swelling that night that's feeling uncomfortable, I actually put my compression hosiery on to sleeping overnight. Therefore, overnight, aiding that reduction of that edema just ever so slightly. So in the morning, your legs feel normal and fresh again so I can take off that compression hosiery. What is the specific advice of wearing compression on a night time? Is it deemed a good thing or, or a bad thing? 
I think that um, when we talk about standard advice, the recommended treatment is that you put your hosiery on first thing in the morning when your legs are feeling nice and, and, and slim and refreshed after a good night's sleep. You put it on then they're, they're going to be, um, they're not going to have any swelling, hopefully, like you say. Um, but then it's about taking them off before you go to bed. And a standard sort of recommendation is that that is a perfect opportunity for you maybe to use your daily routine of putting on some emollients and moisturizers to help sort of rehydrate our skin. Unfortunately, we are all getting older and as we get older, our skin does become a little bit more fragile. Um, the collagen, the elasticity in our skin does sort of loosen over age and we just need to have that little bit of extra oomph to sort of like repair that, um, that sort of the bounce back factor. So if you can put some um, moisture on, a moisturizer on every night before you go to bed, it gives that opportunity then to sort of like soak in overnight. Um, we do know though that it's very common that there are some situations where some patients they really do struggle to take their hosiery off and uh, although the recommendations are that you know it would be advocated put your hosiery on in the morning and take it off every night time there are obviously you know certain situations where that's not always going to be easy some patients if they struggle with actually taking their hosiery off then it may be that you say if you make them aware of what the risk factors are if they need to keep their hosiery on maybe for a couple of days because that's what works with them and they only have carers in every other day that so long as they're aware of what to be um, to, to be looking out for, then it is safe to do so because it's much better that they're wearing some compression than no compression. And if that's the alternative that they wouldn't be able to wear any hosiery at all, if you said you have to take it off every night time. So I think it's always working with the patient and, and looking at um, getting some sort of partnership with them so that they're aware of what we should be aiming for. But obviously we have to individualize our care to make sure that we're looking at what is possible for our patients and then um, making sure that they're aware of what they need to look for if there are problems in the future. Um, yeah, and, and I'm a great believer that it's really down to um, individualised care um, because most individuals know why they're wearing compression hosiery in terms of what are they trying to solve? Are they trying to solve tired and achy legs? If so, they are much better wearing that through the day to help support that venous system. Are they wanting to control edema which is chronic therefore there is an argument to wear them continuously even day and night or if you were just like me trying to control that very soft mild swelling that you've got at certain times reducing that swelling overnight using your hosiery is also a good idea because Tracy you've been in compression hosiery haven't you now for a number of years and, and you found ways to individualize this um how, how do you cope wearing your stockings day in, day out? Um, well, just going back to the um, sleeping um, question, what I tend to do is take the top layer off, um, which is a stronger one, obviously. At the moment, I'm actually wearing two of those top layers um, because my uh, leg ulcer has just recently reoccurred. Um, and then at night, I just sleep in the liner. Um, and then as soon as I get up in the morning, as soon as I put my feet down, I will then put the, the stronger ones back on again. Um, by the end so of the day, to, sorry to interrupt, Tracy. So just to clarify to people that's listening, we use different strengths and different layers of compression depending on what is your underlying reason for wearing them. So when I wear them, I wear the class one soft stockings like it's been described. But when Tracy's got an active leg ulcer, we need a very high strength of stocking. So we tend to layer them up rather than using one very tough stocking. Sorry to interrupt with that, Tracy. It's okay. Um, and then during the day, um, I'm, I actually find them really supportive and comfortable. And if there's been times, say, for instance, if I've got up in the morning, I haven't put them straight on, I can straight away feel that my veins don't feel as supported. Um, so I'm actually a big fan of the compression hosiery that I wear. Um, and I'm very grateful for it compared to the old days when I would have the, the, the layer of the bandaging that used to go on, um, because it's much easier to find footwear. And it's, it's much more adaptable to your life really um but you know come sort of eight nine o'clock at night they do start to feel quite tight and, and if I'm sat downstairs watching tv with my feet up I will take them off a little bit before I go to bed just for that bit of relief because they do start to feel tight as as the day goes on 
Mm. And, and and you know if you're elevating your legs at that same time and then that's not such of a detriment to your care and we just have to remember that we do want sustained compression of a decent level for for a long period of time but obviously it goes back to really what we're treating and, and for what strength and that's why it's really good to have a good relationship with your local healthcare practitioner that's able to tailor that for them and um, there's just been another question come in sarah to say that um how often should compression hosiery be renewed uh, yeah and it's saying should it be renewed every three months and and as you've just um, demonstrated and Tracy's talked about there is a wealth of compression out there which is why it's really important to have an opportunity to discuss which would be the right type of compression for you so Tracy's described that she wears um, a layering um, compression uh, like an ulcer kit so she's able to wear some compression overnight that kind of kit should be renewed every six months to make sure that the elasticity within the garment is working most effectively um, there there are some other ones that we were talking about earlier, the ones that have a lighter fabric and they have um, the lifespan of about three months. Um, sometimes when you go in and see some patients and they um, will pull out of the drawer a pair of compression socks that they've had for many years that they're very proud of that they've been able to keep hold of for say five to ten years and you have to explain to them that although that's really good that they're sort of trying to be economical with the NHS resources that you know the, the garment only will work effectively for a certain lifespan also with our garments and um, they do actually have an expiry date so even though you know I've come across some patients that have kept a box in the drawer um, for many years and they've pulled it out and said well I did get given these but I never wore them do you think these would be effective so it is about making sure that you know which type of hosiery you're looking at and that actually it is still going to be effective if you continue to wear it over the lifespan of it then the the compression therapy isn't going to be of any benefit and you're much more susceptible to maybe those signs and symptoms of venous disease coming back. And, and I and I, the, the bugbear of me is is the patients trying to save NHS money yeah. by wearing these stockings for longer. And what people don't understand is that if the stocking's got a ladder in it, by default, it's going to change the compression from that garment. So in a way that they are that they're actually probably trying to escalate NHS costs rather than reduce them because if that garment isn't providing the right amount of compression actually your legs could get detrimentally worse rather than better mm. and so you know any ladders any fraying any stitching that's coming away means that that compression garment really needs to be renewed it all depends on the manufacturer but most stockings are between three and six months then you need a repeat prescription for those um, and the hardest thing is is to remember which is the new ones and which are the old ones so in a way if you can uh, you know set yourself a deadline so you get a brand new load of stockings in and you bin all your old stockings at that point sometimes it's an easier way to manage what's in your 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 drawers i think Tracy mentioned that she wears a, a type of compression kit that is layered. I think that is, um, it's really important to express that there are lots of different types of compression and that's why it's really important to um, have a conversation with a healthcare practitioner that is knowledgeable about um, the right type of compression for you. So a lot of the off the shelf one are a nice um, round knit fabric, but there are other ones, whereas it may be if you have a different shape limb and you don't conform to maybe the standard measurement chart that we were um, alluding to within um, my presentation. Maybe if you do have, say, chronic edema or you have skin folds, you've not got a, a graduated limb shape, then you would need to have something that would manage those symptoms and um, maybe support your skin and not dig into those skin creases. So, so just to touching on that, so um, many people out there think that compression is uncomfortable. Um, but once you get the fit right, it becomes very comfortable. So can I just ask you a few things that I hear quite a lot from my patients? And what does that mean in terms of the compression garment choice? So what if I'm wearing an open toe garment and my toe, my leg is looking nice and thin, but my toes are getting increasingly um, swollen. So so much they feel like they're touching all the time. What does that mean? 
it means that maybe you're not getting enough compression on the foot. So if you feel that um, the the foot part of your your the, the lower limb isn't being um, is not being effective on the foot part, maybe if that is swelling, then maybe you need to have a slightly firmer fabric to manage that condition. If you've got an open toe, maybe you need to move to a closed toe to see if that will actually manage that condition for you. And like you say, it is about every individual may have a certain type of symptom that you need to manage in a different way. So if they're wearing open toe and their toes are swelling or they're finding that they've got a little bit of um, edema on the foot, then maybe trying a different style of garment, maybe just moving to a closed toe or maybe increasing the firmness of the fabric might be sufficient. Okay, and, and the next one I often get commonly rep reported to me is that um, the stocking goes on quite nicely through the day, but throughout the day I start to get digging in, creasing just where my ankle joins towards my foot. So when I bend my foot, I, I often get rigid and it feels very uncomfortable at that point. What, what does that mean? It may be that unfortunately you've not been provided with the right style of compression. Um, if you do find that that's where the ridging is, it may be um, that you need to have a slightly more supportive garment that is going to provide, um, th that will actually reduce that swelling there and calling, causing that uncomfortableness. There is um, very popular that sometimes somebody without the experience of knowing which is the right garment, a patient might have been given the wrong garment through no fault of their own, they just didn't have the right knowledge to provide the right garment. And if that's the case, then it, it's about going back to your um, healthcare practitioner to make sure you review that you're having an issue with your particular garment. Because like you said, Leanne, it's really important that the patient has a comfortable garment um, such as Tracy has found that she's found the right one to suit her needs rather than actually wearing something that causes that discomfort and then could cause uh, that could go on to actually cause some skin damage later on if you continue to wear something that is actually causing that um, discomfort. Yeah and, and, and I often say to my patients if you put your compression garment on in the morning and the leg is getting swollen through the day it's the wrong garment. I think that's a telltale time. If you're swelling underneath it, it's saying that this just isn't strong enough. Tracy, what do you think? Um, just listening to what you were saying, I agree with a lot of it. I haven't had the ridging across the ankle, um, but what I do get quite often, and it just depends on the day, I can wear the same garments day in, day out, and some days as will happen, some days it won't, where they start to roll down a little bit at the top, and that causes like a dent around just under my knee. And as I say, I can wear them one day, they're absolutely fine. The next day they just decide to do it. So that's one issue I sometimes have with them. And also I was going to agree with what you said about the open toe stocking. During the summer, um, I'll quite often swap to an open toe one and, and wear two layers of the open toe one so that I've still got that support, but I can wear sandals. But I do definitely find after a couple of days of wearing the open toe one, I have to go back to a closed toe, as you were saying, because I would find that there's a little bit of a ridge and then my, you can see a bit of swelling in the toe. Um, yeah. Also, I wanted to say that when we went to um, Florida last year, I actually ended up wearing a compression stocking on my other leg, which I don't have an issue with normally, just to keep that swelling down, as you were saying, which I haven't experienced before. So whether it was a long haul flight or the humidity, um, mm -hmm. and I found that extremely comfortable. And, and as Leanne said, I would just wear that at night. And then the next day, my leg would feel better again. Thank you, Tracy. That's that's really helpful. Just one last question, because we are coming to the end of this session. I can't believe the time's gone so quickly. Um, but uh, Leanne, somebody's posed a question. Joe, thank you very much. If a patient needs a class one stocking, do we need to Doppler? No, you don't. For any form of class one stocking, and there is many different classifications out there, but don't confuse yourself with that, really. If it is a class one stocking, no, they do not need a formal Doppler. So a Doppler is an ankle brachial pressure index, which just measures the amount of blood flow to the arms and compares it to the legs, just to make sure that the stocking's not going to cut off your circulation. But the chance of that happening, it doesn't matter how strong the stocking is, is very slim indeed. We, as though there are licenses and, and recommendations that if you are using a class two stocking or above, then that patient should have some form of arterial assessment. That can be a Doppler or an ABPI, or it can be other forms of arterial assessment. But we just need to make sure that when we're using higher strength stockings, that we are getting patients seen by the best professional not just to look at the risks and benefits of the stockings, but as we've described today, 
choosing the right stocking is paramount in terms of whether you're going to wear it or not and therefore you're going to get that therapeutic benefit and that's really why uh, we want patients to be seen by appropriate healthcare professionals not just for the Doppler test but for this expertise in terms of compression hosiery. That's brilliant. Thank you very, very much. So thank you, Leanne, um, for your expertise. Thank you, Tracy, for putting the patient perspective, your own real life experience, um, uh, your perception onto it is really helpful for anybody that's watching. Um, we have actually run out of time. So I just want to say thank you both for um, listening. Thank you for the audience and for all your questions. And I hope that this session has just basically clarified that compression should be comfortable. If it's not, please go back to your healthcare practitioner and find an alternative because you should be able to wear compression on a daily basis. And by doing so, hopefully it will reduce any problems in the future. And so look forward to all the other sessions that Legs Matter have got on for the rest of the week. Please stay tuned and thank you very much for listening now. Bye bye.